plays down here in Tennessee. We don't need y'all to talk about us because we're going to talk about ourselves. Okay, we're here, Jake. We're here, here on a Wednesday. Uh, the Tennessee Titans here. Uh, we dropped a game, I believe. Last I heard, we lost uh, to the Colts this mm-hmm. past Sunday, twenty to seventeen. Um, yep, Jake. I- I'm going to let you dive into. It. I'm going to throw it to you first. But before that, um, we did get the highlight of the Titans season here in week what five weeks no week six Mm -hmm. uh which was uh, a soundbite from derrick henry being mic'd up at midfield with marcus mariota both in different teams jerseys but dude seeing them reunite i'm just trying to bring in some good feelings before we dive deep into this episode but man jake i never thought like i i really long for the days of marcus mariota derrick henry mike malarkey and early Mike Vrabel in our classic nine and seven Titans. That that is who we are. We are the nine and seven Titans, and we need desperately to get back to that. I miss those days mm-hmm. of, of mediocrity. How I wish we could be mediocre, Jake. Um, but it's so nice. That gave me the warm fuzzies. Way way, way to go. Yeah, it's awesome seeing Derrick Henry fired up to see Mariota. Uh, so that was cool. That was the highlight of the Titan season so far, Jake. Absolutely. And you teed it up there perfectly justin if you hadn't seen the video justin described it well derrick henry was mic'd up you know commanders ravens shaking hands after the game and derrick sees marcus and he freaks out like a little kid you know and goes up and gives <laughs> yeah. him a big hug and xyz but uh it's funny you mentioned that justin because that single clip that i don't know it was maybe 20 seconds tops uh yeah. brought me more joy than the Tennessee Titans have all season. And even maybe going back to last year, at least we got to watch Derrick Henry last year because there is yeah. nothing good about this year's Titans team. Zero. Okay, you know what? I, I came in a little hot. I told you, I warned you, Justin, I'd be a little hot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, first off, I'll start with the positives. Shout out Nick westbrook Akina getting in the end zone. Who yeah. else? Who else? You know, we brought in Calvin Ridley, paid him a gazillion dollars. Uh, brought in Tyler Boyd from the Bengals. Maybe see he could fit in with Brian Callahan. No, doesn't matter. We're still going to run the you know the dig slant decoy with Calvin Ridley and Nick Westbrook Aquino is catching the touchdown. Good to see things haven't changed in that regard. Yeah. Uh, secondly, Tony Pollard is the only good thing about this Titans offense. He has been the yeah. sole bright spot, and and watching him run the football has been a delight. You know, it's it's good to have. You know, very on brand for the Tennessee Titans, Justin, to have a really talented running back back there who's going to get it done in spots where you're going to ask him to do too much. And that's where I'll dive into this Colts game, Justin. Bring it on. Brian Callahan does not trust Will Levis. Brian Callahan mm-hmm. is calling plays scared. He's calling the entire game scared of his own quarterback. And at what point do you... Are, are you not serious about winning games? I feel like I talked about this before the Miami Dolphins game, maybe after it a little bit with the Mason Rudolph situation. It doesn't feel like this team is serious about winning football games at all. Like it, it, like the punt at the end of the game there, Justin. Yes. Two, three minutes left, fourth and seven. The offense, like asking Will Levis to go 70 yards at this point is honestly asking for a miracle, especially in that exact spot to go win the game. But I'm done. I'm done s- sitting here waiting on Will Levis to pop, waiting on that Oilers, Falcons, Will Levis game. I'm sick. I'm not waiting for it anymore. A- at this point, I- I'm just sick and I'm done, Justin. I'm just, I mean, what good has this Titans team done? They are a shell of their former selves. I mean, if you didn't get rid of Mike Vrabel, the Titans might be three and two, uh, two and three, you know, but no, it's just mm-hmm. more of the same. 17 points a game, but guess what? This Brian Callahan team is playing scared, calling plays scared, even more conservative and scared than Mike Vrabel. And three, they're losing these one-score games constantly over and over and over again because guess what? 17 points doesn't win a game. 
And if Brian Callahan doesn't trust Will Levis, at what point do you pull the plug on the whole operation? I just, you know, it's, I, I'm getting myself worked up here, Justin, being on Zoom here with you. It's my weekly Titans therapy session, but I've had it bottled up and it's almost worse to feel nothing at all than it is to feel like sad or disappointed or, you know, uh, you know, even just angry at this Titans team. Yeah. But I left. It Sunday. shows you care. You're not I, just exactly. apathetic. If you care about this team, you want us to see us have success and make steps in the right direction. So I get it. You should be Absolutely. Mad. You should be Absolutely. Uh, I was just about to say, Justin, I left Sunday's game feeling nothing at all, frankly. Oh. And it made me <laughs> – that is what's making me angry right now. Okay. And okay. It's, it's – I'm Please. more angry at the Titans for making me feel nothing. I have perfect – it was a perfect week for the Mariota Derrick Henry video to come out because – I'm not emotionally attached to this team at all. This version of the Tennessee mm. Titans right now, it's there's what what Nick Folk, Nick Westbrook, Akina, you know, <laughs> like what has this team done yeah. for me at all? You know, I like DeAndre Hopkins as a personality. He's probably getting shipped out of town because Rand Carthon is going to start selling guys here. Uh, Calvin Ridley was a cool, fun splash. Eight targets, zero catches. He's mad in the media. Uh, you know. Will Levis, you know, young upstart guy. We kind of have some faith in him. We're a little bit excited about our young quarterback. No, it's over. Like, I I don't think there's anybody left on the Will Levis bandwagon. And if they are, I mean, I, I, I don't know what to tell them. And yeah, so I'm more mad now. I'm directing it at the organization, Justin. And I know this is a very yeah. long-winded rant. I'm so sorry for, for no. taking up the first Let's go. five, ten minutes here, but – I am mad at the organization. Amy Adams Strunk went for a legacy move, firing Mike Vrabel. You felt like you had a core in place in 2019. And it and that's the thing. Again, it goes back to Mario to Derrick Henry. We built that core and it, you know, nine and seven, nine and seven, nine and seven, nine and seven. And then we finally broke through. When sadly Mariota was benched, Tannehill comes in, AFC Championship run, two straight division titles, and you felt like you had that core. Organizationally, yeah. what did they do to keep that core together, Justin? Nothing. They did nothing to keep them together. Traded away AJ Brown. Let uh, Jack Conklin walk. I know that was a little bit beforehand, but I mean, just so many different moves. Not really drafting, drafting poorly was another huge mm -hmm. issue why that core couldn't stay together, stay productive. And then now you let Derrick Henry walk, which was understandable. That's a mutual party of ways. And you fire Mike Rabel, who was arguably a top 10 head coach in the league, even when he was losing games in the last two seasons of his tenure. And switching to a guy like Brian Callahan, who five games into his tenure is playing scared and nervous and handcuffing his own offense because he was brought in to be an offensive guru and open up the yeah. playbook and pass the ball down the field. He can't do that because they yeah. put all their chips in the table for Will Levis. We're going to find out. And that's what's so disappointing about this season, Justin. It was the first game in three years. First game in three years, the Titans didn't allow a sack, and Will Levis couldn't throw for 100 yards. That is pathetic. That's right there. That is pathetic and sad, and it's indicative of coaching. It's indicative of the play calling. I know Will Levis has the sprained shoulder, but that's because he's an idiot and won't protect himself ever. So I don't know what in the organization needs to change. I'm not radicalized to the point where I'm saying sell the team, but Justin – if the next move that Amy Adams Strunk makes with this team does not work out, I mean, it took them so long to get the stink of the Ken Wisenhunt Titans to really invest in Marcus Mariota, build the core, and you had the young talent. And there was a there was a team dynamic here. There is no team dynamic yep. with this year's Tennessee Titans. It's a bunch of free agents. There's a few young guys who can, you can maybe hang your hat on. But it's just not working. They are not a team. This is not a, a, a fun group to root for whatsoever. And you fired the guy who was the the you know the leader during your only years of success since Eddie George and Steve McNair. You fired him to modernize, and now you can't throw for a hundred yards in an NFL game. Who do you point the finger at at the end of the day? And I'm I'm just I'm 
I'm upset with the organization at hand. I'm sorry. That's where yeah. I'll end, Justin. I don't know what you have thoughts on that, but I'm I'm so sorry for coming in so hot. You got me sweating. Please, I please feel take the it heat away. I need, drink, I need to drink water. <laughs> I feel the heat coming through our Zoom call. Uh, heated, heated, Jake. I love it. I, I'm you know, I'm glad to hear you say all these things. I, I love hearing you. You know, being fired up and and where to point the finger at this organization. Um. Well, for, I, I do want to go back. You bring up something that I didn't really think about, uh, about maybe feeling a little apathetic about this version of the Titans team and not feeling like you're connected to any of these players because so many of them are new. They haven't spent time with the team and been through some ups and downs. Like, yeah, this team has so much personality, so much identity with Mariota, especially early on. But even when he was down, you loved him. You wanted to root for him. You were begging for him to succeed with the team. Such a likable guy. You had Derrick Henry, DeMarco Correct. Murray early on. We, we didn't mention Kevin Byard. I know he yes. has kind of yes. tailed off, but he was such an established, like just a pinnacle uh, pillar of, of this Titans defense and team. Uh, Jarrell Casey, you know, mm-hmm. Even going back back further, guys like Wesley Woodyard and 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 guys who would go out and buy their jerseys. Who whose jerseys are you buying now? I mean, Jeff Simmons is that guy, but he's kind of fallen off a little bit with injuries and his production's gone down. And now his name is being brought up and as possible trade potential. Um, uh, you love I love DeAndre Hopkins. I think uh, Hopkins has come in and really embraced the city, embraced mm-hmm. his team. He had a good Absolutely. season last year. Um, but now he's being pointed at as as potential trade bait. So, yeah, I guess I, I never thought about how em- emotionally detached I am. And you kind of get that way with certain players. You're a fan of a team. You have guys that you root for that are that are like bedrocks of of your franchise, and and you can point to them. I mean, Taylor Lewan, even I'm sure a lot of people thought he was a knucklehead and all that, but he was a great player for several years. Uh, brought the personality and identity. What is what even is the Titans identity today. I, I even I like on, on the field, I don't know what we're trying to do. Like we talked about Callahan running conservatively and scared, like all these screen passes that go for zero to three yards, maybe negative yards. We do that time and time and time again. I, it's hard for me to see like what we're trying to do, except for protect Will Levis from making a horrible mistake. That, that's like the game plan. Yeah. I, it, it feels like so. Uh, I don't know. It, it's switching gears to some positives. Like I, I do like what Rand has done. Like we brought in, we have good players, Jake, on this football team, especially on the defensive side. We have a good secondary. Uh, Ernest Jones is a, is a solid linebacker. Love watching him fly around and play. Drafting Devondre Sweat. Jeff Simmons is there. You know, production lacking a slightly, but he's still a. a, a a big piece of that D line, uh, Harold Landry, you know, we've got talent, especially on the defensive side. We're, we're, and they're keeping us in these games. It's not like we're getting blown out. I mean, I've had people say, and, and friends text to me like, Oh, this feels like the Ken, this is like worse than the Ken was hunt Titans, which is seems to be an overreaction. I, we have more <laughs> talent and, and all that on this roster and we are getting the doors blown off of us <laughs> during those years, but we are in these games and I can't help. It's, it's, the offensive side of the ball for me, and more specifically, it's it's the quarterback, dude. I mean, that is the glaring issue. And and having a good quarterback on your team can cover up so many other mistakes, I think, uh, that your football team can bring. Or, or holes in, in the roster, talent, even a lack of, of coaching. Um, if you have a good quarterback, that's the most important position on the field, and, and that can cover up a lot of holes. Um, so – that that is the number one thing that has to be fixed, and it could go beyond Levis. It could be a Callahan thing. Not be, maybe he's not ready to be an NFL coach and to make these calls and to be aggressive and to, and to you know go go for the throat or to have trust in your quarterback to make plays. Even though Levis hasn't seemed to give him a lot of a lot of reasons for trust, but so so there's yeah there, there's a fundamental issue maybe with what Callahan is trying to do and the lack of production and uh, everything, you know, from, from the quarterback position and Will Levis. So that, that's a core flaw, but there, there are things you can point to, you know, 
like I, again with the defense, I, we're, we're giving up 20 points, low twenties per game. We had a bad game against green Bay, but we also threw a pick six in that game. Um, so I, I, it's hard to see where we are with this team when you've won one game on the season um, and you have a quarterback that that's not getting it done and he's not showing any growth. Uh, so I don't know. I kind of throw my hands up and say, we, we've got to find a way to have, get a quarterback on this team. And, and we're going nowhere unless we find a quarterback. We're, we're on that quarterback search. And we got Mariota after a long period of not having a franchise quarterback. And he gave us a couple good seasons then tailed off due to injury and um, not being able to protect him and all that. And his play dip too. I'm not throwing it. I'm not trying to make Mariota blameless. Mm-hmm. But uh, And then Tannehill obviously coming in and – you know, rescuing the franchise and leading us on some elite seasons. I would call Tannehill right now. Can he come? We're under a different regime. He He's looking to start at quarterback. Uh, why not? Uh, but I don't know. So now with him gone now, yeah, if Will Levis is not, I'm pretty, I'm pretty checked out. I think at this point for, from Levis. So we're, we're here again on the, on the search for a franchise quarterback. So what that that's, that's the number one thing, you know, going forward. I don't know. I'm not saying anything, um, crazy or new or uh, any of that. I think all the fans can see, yeah, we have a serious quarterback issue and there are other flaws. I mean, amongst the organization, but I, you got, you got to have a quarterback man to win anything in this league, a quarterback that can throw for a hundred yards in a game would be nice. That, that, that stat is just killing me. Like no, no sacks given up and we couldn't, we can't throw for a hundred yards. Crazy. That's, that's horrible. I mean, that, that is the, in a nutshell, the Titan season so far. I mean, you clamor and you clamor and you beg and you plead any kind of God that's up there, please send an offensive line. And they finally put together a performance where Will Levis isn't on the ground every other play. And he throws for 98 yards, Justin. That is horrible. And he's throwing for like three yards an attempt or something like that. Average. That is on Brian Callahan. That is yeah. just horrendous. This is you fired Mike Vrabel to become a passing aggressive offense, mm-hmm. and that is the it kind of thing a lot you, of... That's what you turn in after a bye week. That's another thing that that just makes that drives yeah. me insane. This game was after a bye week, and this yep. is how this is how you came out. This was your plan: just hand it off to Tony Pollard on surrender draws and pray he runs for a touchdown, which worked once. But I, I can't mean, believe, yeah. What it was it, it, you know, they should have lost by seven. That you know, that 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 Tony Pollard touchdown was awesome. It was a great play. Uh, but it was definitely not drawn up to go for a touchdown. I can tell you that much. Yeah. Right. But I mean, it's just like I you know, I'm just there, I there's zero buy-in for me from this Titans team. What have they shown us? So, all, they broke the 30 point curse, like, and that was fun and everything. That was great and awesome. But then you go on by and then you come back with this. And yep. it was a very winnable game. I mean, if the Titans win this game, we're probably feeling good. Like two and three, you just got your first divisional win. Uh, you know, you got a tough schedule coming up. But now, you know, Will Levis turns in a 98-yard day on 24 attempts and he doesn't get sacked. And I, I mean – you're, you're talking about trading uh, DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley and and just immediately nuking this team that you brought together that, you know, let Rand Cook all offseason. They were the highest spenders in free agency. And what has that gotten them? Absolutely nothing. In fact, we're maybe worse than last year, yeah. which is one, – One win. One win against Tyler Huntley. Which is, which is incredible. You know, like I, I we started this season, Justin, it can't get any worse than last year. Well, here we are. And – I, I it keeps just getting at, worse. At what point do you? This is where I'm possibly being radicalized, Justin, by the Reddit users or the Twitter users. That at what point do you climb the ladder and look up and say the Adams family hasn't got anything done? You know, uh, you know, you point to the yeah. successes, which was. You know, you caught lightning in a bottle with a really good team in 99, and you needed a literal miracle in the playoffs. Crazy, One of the craziest trick plays in NFL history to advance past the wild card round, and you rode that momentum into a Super Bowl where you ended up one yard short. Then, 
you know, they had a couple of good seasons, but could never get back over that hump, Justin, in the playoffs. And then you had choking, choking as the one seed three times since then. Yeah. Choking as the one seed since then. Correct. Not getting it done. Yeah. Not getting it done. And then it was just a parade of mediocrity in between, you know, and then you finally catch lightning in a bottle again with Ryan Tannehill coming in. That team was two and four, Justin. And they had catch yep. a lightning in a bottle and they ride that to the AFC title game. They have a superstar in Derrick Henry. And what do they follow that up with? A division title in in the COVID year and then just a, a whimper playoff loss against the Ravens in that wild card round. Then they come back again. Oh, this is the team. One seed. And didn't get it done, done again. One, One and done and again. Done. So what is the Adams family legacy of owning a football team in the NFL, Justin? Yes, you have had winning seasons. You have had winning football in Nashville, but just perennially one yard short all the time. And when you go and when you take a head coach who brought you your first successes in 20 years, your first postseason success in 20 years, and you fire him to modernize your team, and this is what you ended up with. I, listen, I know we're only five games in, but at what point do you point the finger and say this is a flawed football organization from the top mm -hmm. down because you had the core, you had the young talent, you had the team, you had the coach, you had the culture, Justin. And that's another thing I should have brought up earlier. The culture of that Mariota, Henry, Tannehill, A.J. Brown, Titans – Kevin Byard, I'm glad you listed it off over and over, like players, Jarrell Casey. You had those pillars and those culture setters on that team. And what did you do to keep it together? Absolutely nothing. And you blew it up and you tried to modernize. And now there's no pillars of culture on this team at all, Justin. There's nothing. There's, yeah. What is the Titans culture? What is the Titans identity? Like you said, nothing. Losing. Not passing for 100 yards. And yeah. that, like, I just, I walk away on Sundays not caring about this team. And it's just, I that's what makes me more mad than anything is that I can't, Sundays are awesome. I love a Titan Sunday. Get up. It's game day, yeah. Justin. When the Titans had four wins and I drove down for the December game against the Houston Texans last year, popped right up at 6 a.m. Let's get it. Let's go. Let's go get this win. <laughs> and I just... I don't feel that way about this team. You know, I, I, I just don't. And no, yeah. that's, what's making me mad at Amy Adams drunk. That's what's making me mad at the Titans organization. You took something that was so beautiful that took you years to build. That took you so many iterations of kind of banging your head against a wall. And like, listen, we, you know, you look through, you look back at the past with rose colored glasses. And I know that nine and seven, four times in a row was frustrating as hell. And there was plenty about those teams that made us want to complain. But when you built that and then just consistently, when like the line of demarcation is the AJ Brown trade in the 21 draft mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or 22, 22 draft. Uh, but I, anyways, that is the line of demarcation of that was the first Jenga piece that just toppled the tower. And what did they do it for, Justin? To save some money, to save a few extra dollars, they could have paid A.J. Brown. They had the cash, yeah. but they let yeah. him go. And yeah. since and then, you use it that has pick, been an absolute free fall. You use that pick to uh, to draft Traylon Burks, who, Jake, I kid you not, uh, I think he had a catch in that game. And that, yeah. I think he got hurt. He got banged up a little bit on his one target and one catch. Dude, I forgot he was – on the team and in the game. Like, yeah. I didn't really see – I don't know how many snaps he got, but he has fallen off so so completely. I don't think – well, he he never started up high anyway. He hasn't – I mean, his rookie year maybe had some flashes. But, yeah, you, you've done – you did nothing. You completely wasted all assets that you got from, from A.J. Brown. Yeah. The, those kind of moves over and over again, yeah, have, have just completely sunk this team in, in, into, a, into a hole. And it's, it's funny you – yeah. Uh, I was actually thinking about uh, we've got a lot of home games left, and dude, y'all you know, may know I'm I'm a season ticket holder. But I've thought about just I know you're coming down for one game, so I'm not going to sell that one, Jake. I wouldn't do that to you. But I've been thinking about selling some of these games off, and I and I don't know, man. Like I'm not a wealthy person whatsoever, but but I I 
I budget for the football team that I love, and it, it's a good chunk of change out of my wallet to be a season ticket holder. But now, like, I, I don't know the direction that this team is going. Is it even worth it to spend an entire Sunday afternoon going to the stadium and watching be, this performance on the field? And on top of that, Justin, this team has – this organization has made the decision to build a completely new stadium in 2026 – and are they going to be selling tickets? They better start thinking about some solutions because nobody's going to want to come to these games whenever this is the direction that the franchise is heading. And I know I've got a lot to think about if I'm going to re-up a PSL uh, for the new stadium because, like, yeah, that's just uh, – I'm not I, – I don't have that luxury, Jake, to just be like, yeah, the team could be good, could be bad. I, I'll, I'll pay it anyway. Like, no, I want to see a good product. I've been through some down times, you know. Uh, what we all have during watching this team through the years and the 2010s were pretty rough for the most part. Uh, but I mean, when you say enough is enough and like you look at, yeah, looking at Amy Adam Strunk and these decisions we've made and uh, getting rid of Rabel, that maybe a lot of people thought that was the right move and right direction, but maybe Callahan isn't the guy. And so well, lots of questions, lots of questions. It's still early. We're five games into the Callahan five games regime. In. Five okay. games in. Five games in, but you're you're still starting to wonder. You're scratching your head, like, "What well, I, do I need to be giving as much to this team as I am right now?" Looking at the decisions the past two years and how everything has just kind of fallen apart. Um, I mean, but still, having said all that, Rand Carthon is trying, and I do agree with a lot of the things and decisions that he's made. He's had a couple yeah. of good, strong draft mm-hmm. classes, brought in some talent through free agency. There's some things to point to. Rand seems like he knows what he's doing, but we're just not getting results, you know, on the field from our coach and from our quarterback at this point. And it's hard. It's a hard pill to swallow right now. Yeah, looking at us, continue to take step back, step back, and step back in terms of results. So, yeah. yeah. There's a there's my own little rant. Where, where Man, do we go from here? Dude, I mean, I, I'm as hot as I am at ownership and brass and, and you know, it's a – it's a cancerous organization and you need to make big changes and you're the season ticket holder here, Justin. I I'm just sitting here watching it on TV. I'm not even paying for Sunday ticket. You know, I, and you have every right. So, you know, NFL teams out there, get you a Justin because he's going to be loyal (laughs) as hell. He is not, he's not going to be as angry as a lot of NFL fans can get, including myself. So get you a Justin. But anyways, yeah, and it's just, it's just yeah. I yeah, you mentioned the stadium and just everything about it, Justin, is just like ah, like I I you know, even down to like I don't like the way the stadium looks. It looks like a PS4, <laughs> you know, or like yeah, uh, it yep. does it looks like a it's it it's kind of ugly. And yeah. even down to that, I'm just like who are the Titans anymore? What identity mm-hmm. do we have? Is it just we're a tourist destination. And, you know, you look at Las Vegas with their, you know, brand new stadium and it was filled with Pittsburgh Steelers fans. And is Nashville kind of the same way? Big tourist destination. Everybody's just going to come buy the cheap Titans tickets because the real fans mm-hmm. don't care anymore. And they got a shiny new stadium and you can go sit in the dome and watch your team beat Titans in a one score game because we can't throw the football. And I just, right. ah, like, I don't know. Anyways, all that saying, yeah. I'm very much looking forward to driving the five hours down to Nashville, Justin, in December. Uh, we're going to the Bengals game. I love rooting against the hometown squad, and we're going to be there. We're going to be at Section 141. 146. 146. I almost North I, I knew we were in the 140s. And we're going to be there. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be loud. I'm going to be proud. I'm going to be decked out in Titans gear. I'm not going yeah. anywhere, Justin, but, man, it is hard to – see any kind of vision, have any kind of hope right now. And that's just where I'm at as a fan. I just, I, you know, I said cancel the the apple picking and cancel the pumpkin patch, but it's back on. They're back on because I don't know how many Sundays back this on. team is going to get out of me uh, this season just because there's no vision, there's no hope. We just got to, you know, it's, it's okay to go in with zero expectation, expect a loss, and – and you won't be let down as much. We'll find other ways to have fun. We'll get some drinks, you know, while you're yeah. in, in Nashville or Murfreesboro where I live. We'll find some stuff. I'll make it worth your while. 
to, no, to no, make, that's... make the five hour trip down here. We just got to expect the Titans to just to just crush us a little bit. They're going to give us hope in that Cincinnati <laughs> game. They're going to give us hope. Yeah. They're going to give us some hope that hey, we might pull this out. We oh, might win, man. and it's all going to come crashing down as it usually does. Hey, Justin, the real wins are not on the football field. The real wins are the friendships that we make along the way. <laughs> if and it wasn't for this team, we would not be. We I would. That's true. Not know you. We would be friends. 100%. So I exactly. Owe the time I would even know you exist, and now we're great friends and. <laughs> We do this, you know, little tradition every year, and I, I look forward to it every <laughs> every season. So listen, I'm not out on the Titans. I'm out on these yeah. Titans. There's a difference. Yeah. And okay. Okay. so I'm not banging the cell, the team drum quite yet, but I'm getting it out of the closet. I'm just I'm just <sighs> kinda I know that it's there. And I don't think you hey, listen, what Amy Adams has done for this organization and the city of Nashville has been great and she has every contribution and she was in the well, you know, the, 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 what am I, what is the word I'm looking for? She was in well standing with this franchise for a long time. She mm-hmm. had a lot of good yeah. grace from this franchise and why shouldn't she, you know, she, everybody loved her. Out the, the, the meme of she's, she's the team mom, team yeah. mom. Cause she kind of had that mom kind of personality too. And it was, it was an identity thing as yeah. well. And, and absolutely, everyone, we embraced her for sure. And where is she now? When's the last time you've seen Amy Adams drunk? Mm. I mean, she went to the corner store to buy cigarettes and milk, and she hasn't come back, Justin, because <laughs> this is a disaster. Right. And why would she show her face and meet with fans and go to tailgates? Oh, no, there's no tailgate because they bulldoze the parking lot, and they're building this new ugly stadium. Ah. Anyways. You know what? Conspiracy. Conspiracy theory. She's building this new stadium. She's going to up the value of the franchise, and she's getting ready to sell in 2026. Oh, once the I like built. that, Justin. I really Ooh. like that conspiracy. Ooh. That's what I'm gonna I'm gonna put that conspiracy up here. That's nice. I like that. <laughs> I, you I like heard that it here lot. first, 2024. I'm calling it. That's what that's what her, her grand her long her long plan is. I like it. But no, like no, it. that's that, that's crazy. But. I don't know. Yeah, Anyways. it just feels, and it's it's very much of a venting uh, episode, and I think it's deserved. And, and yeah, that this team is is uh, turning our hairs gray a little bit, but maybe it's it's okay to check out for a season or two. I mean, this team has to earn our love and, and our trust and our uh, respect in our eyes and ears on Sundays, and and it's yep. getting harder and harder to do week by week. So. If you guys sat through all of that, uh, hope may, hopefully you share that with us and we can all kind of cope together a little bit. Um, golly, dude, we have to go to Buffalo next week. Uh, and they I don't just even want to Martin think about Cooper. it. And Detroit next week. And oh, no. whoever, dude, you whoever know what? the week after that and the week after that. Our undefeated streak against the Detroit Lions is definitely ending this year. You know, we've the Tennessee Titans have never lost to the Detroit Lions. We're like 5 That's or awesome. 6 and 0. Oh. There's no way. They, they look like a Super Bowl contender. It's, dude, we live in crazy times. The Detroit Lions are Super Bowl contenders, and the Titans are down, but that's that's not that's crazy to believe. <laughs> we have, we, we've, had, we've had down years. But, um, but that, yeah, that well, that was fun while it lasted. Sorry. Oh, congrats, Detroit, for ending that. I don't even know if anyone is aware of that in Detroit. But mm. anyway, yeah, it's, it's, we're, we're staring down the barrel of one and six, one and seven. Yeah. Uh, Maybe we can win against the Patriots. Hey, that'll be a fun. That'll be a fun time. Can we beat Jacoby Brissett? He got benched. Maybe, I don't know. Oh, oh but, yeah, um, it is Drake May these days. But we'll see. We'll see how many wins yeah. this team can cobble together, Justin. I don't know if it's worth it at this point. You know, we're kind of entering the tank discussion. And, uh, you know, if you're not going to contend whatsoever, you might as well get a high draft pick. So mm-hmm. we'll see how it ends up. Anyways, thank you all for tuning in to our rant session. I feel like we only made We're like so three or four points, but we covered 40 minutes. And, uh, you know, yeah. like, yeah. comment, subscribe, all that jazz. I know you guys want to hear more about this Titans team. You know, you're thirsting for more Titans content this season. Uh, yeah. But we appreciate you all tuning in. And uh, we'll see you in the next one for probably more of the same. And for better or for worse, we'll be here. <laughs> Yeah. See in you then. sickness and in health till death do us part. <laughs> uh, Amen. Mm-hmm.